The scene opens with a gathering of powerful criminal organizations, including the Pikes, Crimson Dawn, and Huts. It's described as a golden age for the underworld, with the Empire distracted by rebellion after the destruction of the Death Star. This presents an opportunity for massive profits. However, tensions arise as one group is accused of sending a spy and skimming profits from spice trades. The leader, Zarek Bash, reveals his intentions to take control rather than form partnerships. He shares a personal anecdote about his brother's greed, comparing it to the current situation. The protagonist plans to break into K. Tarsus to steal forged identic cards, hoping to secure passage to the core worlds. After declining an offer for honest work, they proceed with their plan. The next scene shows them participating in a local event called the Kento Cup, where they successfully pickpocket some valuables. They then seek help from Pran to fix a data spike, crucial for their heist. The protagonist explains their desperate situation, seeing theft as their only viable option to escape the planet and avoid prison. With the help of a small droid named Nyx, they begin their heist. They navigate through vents and security measures, using various tactics to gain access to restricted areas. The plan encounters a setback when they trigger a pressure switch, alerting security. A confrontation with security ensues, but the protagonist manages to escape with the stolen identic card. They attempt to hide at their usual safe spot, but it's compromised. Pursued by a group called the Six Kin, they are forced to flee, leaving behind an injured friend named Bram. The chase continues through the city, with the protagonist narrowly evading capture. The story transitions to a new scenario where the protagonist joins a crew for a high-stakes heist against a crime boss named Slow, who runs the Zarek Bash Syndicate. The crew plans to infiltrate Slow's heavily guarded mansion and access his vault. The protagonist's role is to disable security systems and reach the vault while the rest of the crew creates a diversion. The heist begins with the protagonist infiltrating the mansion. They navigate through security measures, disable alarms, and make their way to the vault. Inside, they encounter unexpected complications. The vault is empty, and they come face to face with members of the Rebel Alliance, who offer them a chance to join their cause. However, the situation quickly deteriorates as Slow's forces close in. A chaotic escape ensues, with the protagonist fighting their way out of the mansion. They are captured by Slow, but manage to break free with the help of their droid companion, Nyx. Slow places a death mark on the protagonist, promising a fortune for their capture. The escape continues as they steal a ship and attempt to flee the planet, narrowly avoiding pursuit. The stolen ship crash lands on an unfamiliar planet. The protagonist encounters a local who initially mistakes them for a threat. After a tense moment, the local reveals themselves to be a mechanic and offers to help repair the ship in exchange for credits. They inform the protagonist that they've landed on Tashara, a place where their skills could be valuable. The scene ends with a hint at potential involvement with the Pike Syndicate on this new world. The protagonist is instructed to speak with Gorok, an underboss who can provide work. A speeder in the ship will facilitate travel to Marana City. The protagonist, named Ware, threatens to hunt down anyone who tampers with the ship. Upon arriving in Marana, Ware is impressed by the city's appearance. The ship, now repaired, is ready for a big score in the core worlds. The protagonist, posing as Torn Valerio, successfully passes an identification check. Attempting to meet Gorok, they are informed that access to the upper levels requires an invitation. The mining guild forecasts a significant increase. Governor Thoron's authority over the city is emphasized as someone is dragged out for questioning about payments. The protagonist attempts to meet Gorok, claiming to have been sent by Walker for work. Gorok dismisses them, considering their approach careless and disappointing. The encounter highlights the protagonist's inexperience in this new world. The importance of reputation and caution in navigating the local power structures is emphasized. Dona, a broker, introduces herself and explains the complex political landscape of Maragana. 
The Empire maintains the cantina as neutral ground, but beyond its walls, various syndicates vie for power. The Pikes, led by Gorak, hold the most influence due to their favorable relationship with the Empire. Crimson Dawn and the Huts are also significant players. Dona offers the protagonist a job to steal information from a BX private base, emphasizing the importance of reputation in this world. The protagonist accepts a job to infiltrate Gorok's stronghold in the Pike District. The mission involves entering through a second-floor terrace and stealing a file marked SK-1. The Imperial checkpoint near the main entrance is noted as a potential complication. The protagonist expresses confidence in handling the situation, despite the challenges presented by being on the Pike's bad side. The protagonist infiltrates the Pike operation, noting its massive scale and likely deal with the Empire. They navigate past an energy barrier and ascend the tower to find a terminal. An alarm is triggered during the file search, revealing that the target file is merely a spice recipe. The protagonist decides to make the mission worthwhile by stealing an encrypted file. Meanwhile, a conversation between Mr. Shar and Slack reveals a plot to overthrow Gorak, adding a layer of intrigue to the situation. With the alarm triggered, the protagonist must find an alternative escape route as the elevator is locked down. They resort to climbing to safety. Upon successful extraction, they contemplate their next move, considering selling the stolen information about the plot against Gorak. The protagonist empathizes with someone down on their luck at a casino, offering to split potential winnings. The protagonist meets Thea of Crimson Dawn, who reveals knowledge of their previous ship theft and the resulting death mark from Zershal. Thea coerces the protagonist into working for Crimson Dawn, providing fuel injectors as incentive. The complex power dynamics between the Pikes and Crimson Dawn are hinted at, with the latter making strategic moves. Thea mentions that Brawl's leg is healing, suggesting a previous encounter. The protagonist obtains fuel injectors and prepares to leave. Dona suggests finding more work to cover additional ship repairs. The protagonist is directed to Bello, a Pantoran pawn shop owner, to acquire parts for an ion blaster modification. The illegal nature of such modifications is emphasized, necessitating theft from either the Pikes or Crimson Dawn. The protagonist successfully steals the required part from a Pike safe house. The Trailblazer is moved to a more comfortable dock at a settlement called John's Hope. The protagonist reflects on their current situation, acknowledging the challenges of having a death mark but remaining optimistic about landing a big score. They proceed to modify their blaster using the stolen part and the ship's workbench. The protagonist completes a job for Dona, stealing a tracking transponder and credits from a hut stash. Dona provides a tip about potential allies who could upgrade the protagonist's equipment. The value of information over credits is emphasized. The protagonist then prepares to install the fuel injectors on the trailblazer. The protagonist seeks out Issa Bren, a renowned slicer, to acquire advanced slicing technology. Issa challenges the protagonist to bring an imperial code sequencer as a test. The protagonist successfully retrieves the sequencer from an imperial compound, demonstrating their skills and determination. The protagonist assists Issa in escaping from an imperial facility, navigating security measures and sealed doors. The complexity of the mission increases as they work to unlock systems and reach Issa's location. The sequence highlights the protagonist's growing capabilities in handling high-stakes situations and adapting to unexpected challenges in their new life as a freelance operative. The protagonist is instructed to activate turrets and shut down anti-air defenses at a control tower. They are given permission to use force to neutralize a target. The situation is tense, with enemies approaching and the protagonists pinned down. There's urgency to complete the mission and escape. The mission progresses with the protagonist successfully lowering defenses and preparing to leave the moon. They discuss acquiring better slicing technology with someone named Issa, who offers to provide an extra stash through a contact named Zenth. The protagonist expresses relief at escaping without being captured. 
The protagonist receives the promised slicing kit and is directed to test it on a specific cache. They express gratitude to someone named M for their assistance. The scene shifts to a space station where the protagonist is helping install fuel injectors on a ship. Despite the repairs, the ship is described as being in poor condition with a non-functional hyperdrive. The mission begins with the protagonist piloting a ship to intercept a freighter carrying Sansana, a substance similar to spice. They must pose as the delivery crew to gain access to the Imperial Space Station. En route, they encounter raiders and engage in a space battle to protect their cargo. The protagonist approaches the Imperial Space Station, posing as a cargo delivery. They are instructed to follow a TIE fighter escort to a docking bay for inspection. The true nature of the mission is revealed, to delete debt records owed by various syndicates to Governor Thornton, framing the pikes in the process. Upon docking, the protagonist must distract Imperial officers while searching for the data vault. They sneak out to find a floor plan, engaging in tense conversations with Imperial personnel to maintain their cover. The data vault is located in the maintenance bay. In the data vault, the protagonist encounters Bosno, Thornton's bookkeeper, who is being held as a prisoner. Bosno offers to help in exchange for escape. The protagonist agrees to delete certain records, specifically those related to the Pikes, to frame them and benefit Crimson Dawn. The escape begins, with the protagonist and Bosno navigating through the station, evading Imperial forces. They encounter various obstacles, including energy barriers and pursuing stormtroopers. The tension escalates as they race to reach their ship and leave the station. The escape continues with the protagonist and Bosno reaching the hangar. They must override cargo authorization and clear out stormtroopers to access their ship. Once aboard, they face further challenges as they attempt to flee the station while pursued by TIE fighters. The chase extends into space with the protagonist piloting through a debris field to lose their pursuers. They successfully wipe data from an Imperial communications relay to cover their tracks. The mission concludes with their return to Marana, carrying Bosno as an unexpected passenger. Back on Marana, the protagonist reports to their contact about Bosno, who possesses valuable information about the governor's dealings. They learn about a bounty hunter named Vil who has been pursuing them. The conversation shifts to upgrading the protagonist's speeder and potential future jobs, hinting at an expanding reputation in the criminal underworld. The protagonist impresses some associates by winning at a game. They are invited to play with high rollers and directed to find Bosno, who is running a table at Koslo Sock Parlor. The protagonist then seeks someone to modify their speeder to handle strong winds. They are told about CEO Roke, the best bike modder in the area, who can be found in Kadua, a wind fishing settlement outside Mogana. Upon arriving in Kadua, the protagonist inquires about CEO Roke. Initially met with suspicion, they learn that CEO has left and is now living near John's Hope. When they find CEO, she agrees to help modify the speeder but requires an atmospheric accelerator from an imperial wind harvester. CEO provides mag disruptors to assist in acquiring the part. The protagonist infiltrates the wind harvester to obtain the atmospheric accelerator. They discover that CEO had previously given the part to the Empire in exchange for off-world components, unaware it would be used to disrupt local farmers' wind patterns. After successfully retrieving the accelerator, they return to CEO, who installs it on the speeder, significantly boosting its performance. With the speeder modified, the protagonist meets a contact at the marketplace, Cantina. The contact informs them about an old WCK ship buried in Amberine that contains compatible parts for a nav computer. To access it, they need a Class 11 power core from an Imperial compound. The protagonist infiltrates the compound and obtains the power core. Using the newly acquired power core, the protagonist enters the buried WCK ship. They navigate through the deteriorating structure, powering up the reactor to access the bridge. Upon reaching the control room, they encounter unexpected resistance from Zerk Bash agents. A confrontation ensues, 
revealing potential betrayals and misunderstandings. After a tense escape, the protagonist meets Jalen VX, who proposes a heist targeting Saro's mansion. The plan involves stealing 157 million credits worth of unmarked Beskar ingots from a heavily secured vault. Jalen suggests assembling a crew for the job, promising a significant payout and a chance to push back against powerful crime lord SLO. The protagonist agrees to the heist plan. They are joined by an enforcer programmed to prevent betrayal. As they prepare to leave, they discover their hyperdrive is offline. The recently acquired nav computer is expected to fix this issue. Jalen provides a list of potential crew members to recruit, including a droidsmith on Nar Shadda, a heavy on Tatooine, and a safecracker on Kijimi. The team arrives on Kijimi to recruit Ank, described as the best safe cracker in the Outer Rim. They learn that Kijimi is caught in a power struggle between the Asiga clan and Crimson Dawn. The Enforcer warns the protagonist to move quickly and cautiously through the criminal-infested area. Despite the protagonist's confidence, the Enforcer insists on using their own contacts to navigate the dangerous situation safely. The protagonist obtains a hollow tracker formerly owned by Jet Cordo, the previous owner of the Trailblazer ship. A hologram message from Jet explains that the tracker can locate hidden vaults containing contraband. The device is attuned to Tara, requiring a visit there to reactivate it and find Jet's vault. Upon arrival, the protagonist encounters the Ashika cartel. They claim to be looking for someone named Ankh who owes them money. The cartel, suspecting ties to Crimson Dawn, scans the ship but finds nothing of interest. The protagonist is cleared to leave, but warned against lying again. They decide to check the cantina for information about Ankh. At the cantina, it's revealed that Ankh has been caught by the Ashika and is working in a factory to pay off a multi-million credit debt. This complicates the protagonist's plans, necessitating a potential rescue mission. They begin by seeking factory schematics through terminal slicing in the Ashika district. The protagonist meets Rooster, a former mercenary skilled with heavy weapons. Rooster's weapons were confiscated by the Empire, and the tracking device was dumped in an asteroid field. The protagonist offers to help recover the weapons, seeing an opportunity. In the asteroid field, they locate Rooster's homing beacon amidst Imperial TIE fighters. The signal points to Tatooine, suggesting the weapons are being moved. They relay this information to Rooster and plan to meet on Tatooine to recover the weapons. While searching for information on Ankh, the protagonist discovers that Crimson Dawn has stolen a relic from the Ashika clan. They decide to retrieve it, potentially gaining favor with the Ashika queen. The relic is located in the Wellspring, a private club in the Thoral district. The protagonist successfully retrieves the relic from the Wellspring and plans to return it to the Ashika Queen. This action grants them an audience with the Queen, though they are warned to be cautious as they might be perceived as the thief. Upon meeting the Ashika Queen, the protagonist returns the relic and negotiates for Ankh's release. The Queen, seeing value in the protagonist's skills, offers a deal, work for the Ashika clan in exchange for Ankh's freedom. The protagonist agrees, seeing it as progress in their mission. The protagonist receives a weapon upgrade for their blaster, allowing for explosive bolts. They also get a message from Krisk, an Ashika heir, requesting a meeting at the Kajimi City Cantina to discuss Ankh's situation. The situation on Kajimi becomes complicated with the presence of Imperial Stormtroopers. This forces the protagonist to consider alternative plans for their mission, as the Empire's involvement was unexpected. At the meeting, the protagonist encounters Kira, Queen of the Crimson Dawn Hive, instead of Ankh. Kira reveals that Ankh sold out the Ashika to the Empire and offers a deal, help put Krisk on the Ashika throne in exchange for Ankh's freedom. Despite reservations, the protagonist is given access to the Ashika Weapons Factory to rescue Ankh. Upon finding Ankh, the protagonist attempts to explain their mission, but is interrupted by an explosion. Amid the chaos, they work together to escape the facility, 
dealing with various obstacles and pursuing guards. A heist is proposed involving 157 million unmarked credits stored in an impenetrable vault. The speaker is recruited for their skills, despite initial reluctance. Meanwhile, a character named Jalen is working on a job for Kira from Crimson Dawn, indicating a larger plot on Kajimi. The speaker is advised to stick with a character named Hank, who is described as unable to focus on multiple things simultaneously. Supplies to help close the deal have been sent to the Trailblazer. The protagonist, referred to as Kay, discovers that Hank has declined their offer and is working for someone else. Kay is advised to help Hank finish her current job. A new character, Mayu, contacts Kay on behalf of the Queen for a potential job. Kay agrees to meet, stating their intention to ensure Hank's safety. The situation on Kajimi is explained, with the Queen handing control to the Empire. Crimson Dawn sees an opportunity to enter the market, betting on Chris's success in saving the Hive. K and ND5 discuss the ethics of working with Crimson Dawn versus the Empire. They proceed through a large cave system, preparing to shut down turrets crucial for the Hive's future. ND5 explains the Melito culture, where everyone obeys the Queen and prioritizes clan needs. K successfully shuts down the turrets, allowing Krisk's forces to move through the courtyard towards the throne room. K then heads out, leaving the main action. Kay is informed of a breach in the cryo chamber, with Crimson Dawn making a move. The Queen, detained in the throne room, requests Kay to retrieve the Origin Strand from the Pro System. Kay successfully obtains it, questioning its significance to Crimson Dawn. Meanwhile, it's revealed that Kira has orchestrated a syndicate war to eliminate rivals and seize power. Kay is warned not to trust Kira, despite working alongside her forces. A confrontation occurs between Krisk and the Queen. Krisk accuses the Queen of endangering their future by aligning with the Empire. The situation escalates, resulting in the Queen's execution. Krisk declares herself the new voice of the Hive. Kay expresses discomfort with the turn of events, questioning the true motives behind weakening the Hive. Kira's representative justifies their actions as necessary for achieving freedom, inviting Kay to join their cause. A new job opportunity arises, involving a deal between the Pikes and Crimson Dawn for an exotic clam. The mission is to disrupt the deal and ensure the product reaches the intended buyer. Kay agrees to take on the job. Meanwhile, with Hank on board, progress is made towards removing a death mark. Jalen offers support and encouragement to Kay after the challenging events on Kajimi. K and ND5 encounter a space battle between Pike ships and another faction. They discuss the need to recruit a legendary fighter named Haas for an upcoming heist. However, Haas was recently arrested for minor crimes. K sets out to find and recruit Haas, starting with the sheriff who arrested him. Upon arrival, they find the town unusually empty and engage in combat with Hut forces. After defeating the Hut forces, Kay speaks with Sheriff Joy about Haas. The sheriff reveals that Haas escaped after being arrested for robbing the town. Kay is directed to a nearby abandoned moisture farm to search for Haas. Upon investigation, Kay finds a dead bounty hunter and a transponder potentially tracking Haas. ND5 explains the typical fate of those with death marks, suggesting Haas is desperate and potentially easy to recruit. Kay tracks Haas to a crashed speeder near some cliffs. Cautiously approaching, Kay encounters Hawes, who initially mistakes them for a threat. Upon learning Kay was sent by Jalen, Hawes agrees to help, but first requests assistance in retrieving a Tuscan dragon pearl from bandits. Kay successfully retrieves the pearl from a cave filled with hostile forces, demonstrating their skills to Hawes. After retrieving the dragon pearl, Kay meets with Hawes. Impressed by Kay's abilities, Hawes agrees to join the mission. However, he attempts to negotiate having his bar tab paid as a condition of his cooperation. The summary concludes with Haas agreeing to meet Kay for further discussion about the upcoming job. The scene opens at Docking Bay 94 in Mos Eisley, where the protagonist is preparing to embark on a risky mission. They discuss the slim odds of success, 
but the protagonist is determined to take the chance, believing it's the only way to survive in a galaxy rigged against them. The dialogue reveals a mindset of taking risks and seizing opportunities rather than accepting a predetermined fate. An alert is issued about stolen Imperial property, prompting the protagonist to plan an intervention. They prepare to intercept a convoy, choosing to blow it up rather than simply rob it. The scene shifts to a training moment where the protagonist learns to use a Z6 heavy weapon. This segment highlights the protagonist's adaptability and willingness to engage in high-stakes situations for personal gain. The convoy ambush begins. The protagonist and their companion use mines and heavy weapons to attack the Imperial forces. The intense firefight demonstrates the protagonist's growing combat skills and their ability to work effectively in a team. After the battle, they salvage weapons from the wreckage, showing their resourcefulness in acquiring valuable items from dangerous situations. The scene transitions to Mose Isley, described as a rough spaceport town filled with dangerous pirates. The protagonist displays confidence in handling such environments, suggesting a background in similar settings. They plan to visit a cantina to make connections with local pirate gunslingers, indicating a desire to learn new skills and expand their network in the criminal underworld. The scene shifts to a location where exotic pets are being held for wealthy buyers. The protagonist demonstrates compassion by freeing one of the creatures, contrasting with their otherwise hardened persona. This action leads to complications, emphasizing the potential consequences of emotional decisions in their line of work. A tense situation unfolds as the protagonist's actions jeopardize a score. Their companion criticizes them for letting emotions interfere with the job, highlighting the conflict between personal feelings and professional ruthlessness in their world. Despite the setback, the protagonist decides to keep the freed creature, showing a stubborn adherence to their choices. The plot takes a dramatic turn as the protagonist learns that their companion, Nyx, has been taken by Jabba the Hutt. Despite warnings about Jabba's dangerous nature, the protagonist is determined to rescue Nyx, whom they consider family. This decision showcases their loyalty and willingness to take extreme risks for those they care about. The rescue mission begins as the protagonist infiltrates Jabba's palace through a back entrance. The high-stakes nature of this operation is emphasized, with the protagonist acknowledging the risk, but proceeding anyway. Their determination to save Nyx overrides any sense of self-preservation, demonstrating the depth of their attachment. Inside Jabba's palace, the protagonist navigates carefully to avoid triggering alarms. They search for Nyx among Jabba's collection of rare creatures, highlighting the hut's reputation as a collector of exotic beings. The tension builds as they attempt to locate and free Nyx without being discovered. The protagonist successfully finds and frees Nyx. The emotional reunion underscores the strong bond between them. However, their escape is far from guaranteed, as they must now find a way out of Jabba's heavily guarded palace without being detected. The escape attempt leads to a confrontation with Jabba. Negotiations quickly break down, resulting in a chaotic flight from the palace. The protagonist's quick thinking and adaptability are put to the test as they navigate the dangerous situation, trying to outmaneuver Jabba's forces. During their escape, the protagonist encounters a formidable creature, possibly a rancor. They must use their wits and limited resources to overcome this new threat, demonstrating resourcefulness in the face of overwhelming odds. The scene emphasizes the constant danger and unpredictability of their lifestyle. The escape continues with the protagonist facing mechanical challenges in addition to pursuit. They must repair systems and reroute power while fending off attacks, showcasing their technical skills alongside combat abilities. The intensity of the situation highlights the multifaceted nature of survival in their world. An attempt at diplomacy with Jabba fails, leaving the protagonist in a precarious position. They learn of a connection between their target, Zarek Besh, and the Empire, 
adding a new layer of complexity to their mission. This revelation suggests larger political forces at play in their seemingly personal vendetta. The protagonist finds themselves grounded on Tatooine by Jabba's order, complicating their plans. They're forced to work with a bounty hunter they previously opposed, highlighting the fluid nature of alliances in their world. This unexpected partnership sets the stage for potential conflicts and uneasy cooperation. A new mission unfolds as the protagonist and their reluctant ally plan to infiltrate an Imperial facility. The dynamic between them is tense, with mutual distrust evident in their interactions. This collaboration, born of necessity, demonstrates the complex relationships formed in the criminal underworld. The infiltration of the Imperial facility begins, with the protagonist and their partner using stealth and distraction tactics to navigate past guards. Their different approaches and constant bickering highlight the challenges of working together despite their shared goal. The scene emphasizes the dangers of their mission and the need for careful coordination. Inside the facility, the protagonist discovers unexpected information about Zarek Besh's connection to the Empire. This revelation creates tension between them and their partner, who seems to have her own agenda. The scene underscores the complex web of loyalties and secrets that define their world. An alarm is triggered, forcing the protagonist and their partner into a frantic escape from the Imperial facility. Their ability to work together under pressure is tested as they navigate obstacles and pursue enemies. The high-stakes escape showcases their combat skills and quick thinking in crisis situations. In the aftermath of their mission, the protagonist and their partner head to a rendezvous point to complete their deal with Jabba's people. The tension between them remains high, with unresolved questions about loyalty and hidden agendas. As they approach their destination, there's a sense of unease about what awaits them, reflecting the constant uncertainty of their lives in the galactic underworld. A team encounters resistance and loses communication due to jamming, they face continuous attacks and struggle to find a way out of the situation. One team member is hit, but they remain determined to overcome the challenge. The scene highlights the intensity of the conflict and the team's resilience in the face of adversity. An antagonist, possibly Fortuna, reveals that he planted an agent in the team's ranks, who is now dead. He points out weaknesses in their organization and offers to help take control of a palace. The conversation shifts to a character named Kay, who is praised for having loyal friends. The scene ends with a threat of pursuit. Fortuna sends a message about a new job. Crimson Dawn also has a task with a contact waiting in Best Subash Paror. It's revealed that the protagonist owes money to Jabba, which needs to be addressed. The scene transitions to a search for the fastest gunslinger in Haley, leading to inquiries about various skilled shooters, most of whom are deceased. The setting shifts to vast salt flats, once an ocean. The protagonist seeks information about an old gunslinger and decides to speak with Quint, a sheriff from Wayfar who used to work for the huts. The scene describes the unique purple sunsets caused by evaporated seawater, adding atmospheric detail to the environment. The protagonist meets with Quint, a skilled shooter preparing for an impending HUD attack. Despite initial reluctance, Quint agrees to let the protagonist help defend the town. They engage in target practice to assess and improve shooting skills, focusing on proper technique and quick draw abilities. A battle ensues as the huts attack. The protagonist and Quint work together to defend the town, successfully repelling the assault. In the aftermath, Quint reflects on how past actions can have lingering consequences. The scene emphasizes the protagonist's improved shooting skills and the potential dangers of their profession. The story transitions to a conversation about schematics for Sero's mansion. Jalen, a team member, inquires about events on Tatooine involving a bounty hunter. The protagonist's actions have earned respect, 
potentially eliminating the need for a new heavy. The scene highlights the value of making unlikely allies in their line of work. The team successfully leaves the planet. Jalen praises the protagonist's skills, but emphasizes the need for additional team members. They discuss finding a second slicer and possibly new muscle. The scene ends with preparations for a hyperspace jump, indicating the start of a new mission or journey. The team arrives on a lush green planet teeming with illicit activities. They seek a skilled droidsmith named Gad to bypass a gatekeeper. The protagonist's knowledge of the criminal underworld is evident as they plan to meet Surat, a local gangster, at the Alazar Cantina. The scene sets up the next phase of their mission in this new dangerous environment. The protagonist enters the Alazar Cantina to meet Surat. Using Spice as leverage, they obtain information about Gad's location at an Imperial research station. The scene reveals potential complications, including Hut involvement and Surat's personal vendetta against his brother. These details add layers of complexity to the mission. The team infiltrates the Imperial base to find Gad. They navigate through security measures and confront various obstacles. The protagonist locates Gad, who is involved in a project using Viper droids. The scene builds tension as they attempt to extract Gad from the facility while dealing with immediate threats and uncovering hints of larger Imperial plans on A'a. Gad agrees to help the protagonist with a gatekeeper droid problem in exchange for escape. They make their way out of the facility, facing challenges from Imperial forces and Viper droids. The scene ends with the promise of future collaboration and hints at Gad's complicated past, including issues with the huts. The escape sequence highlights the team's resourcefulness and the potential dangers of their upcoming mission. The speaker has moved to Trailblazer to be closer to the listener's location. They discuss fixing a speeder problem, mentioning that TW can provide a hydro roller from family in Sashin Village. S has contacted the speaker with a potential job opportunity. The scene shifts to a hidden jungle village with limited technology and no visible security. Someone challenges the listener to reach an island on a lake west of Sashin, rumored to be a smuggler's drop-off point. The speaker agrees to investigate. The scene transitions to a search for Ton Wexley, who has been missing for days. The speaker, identified as Kay, meets Ton's aunt Tamil and her partner Shireen. Kay is looking for a speeder modification, but faces suspicion about his intentions. Tensions are high in the area. Kay offers to find Ton, who might be scrapping in an old junkyard by the lake. The conversation mentions a location called the Witch's Finger, associated with local legends. Kay discovers someone has found Ton before him. Kay encounters Ton, who is initially frightened, but calms down when Kay identifies himself as a friend of G. Ton agrees to modify Kay's speeder, but lacks some necessary parts, particularly Dur steel struts, which were taken by Satat's men to their island. Kay decides to retrieve the struts himself. The scene shifts to Kay using his newly modified speeder with a hydro repulsor to cross the lake. Kay is pursuing a shuttle, likely carrying Ton's stolen parts. Kay discusses the situation with a physicist who is being hunted due to inventing a new kind of Viper droid for the Empire. The droids are causing problems, and the physicist wants to fix the situation rather than flee. Kay successfully retrieves the Dur Steel struts from the island and returns them to Tan, who completes the speeder modifications. They discuss the dangers of running a shop alone in an area controlled by syndicates. Kay and the physicist plan their next move to stop the Viper droids from terrorizing the underworld. The physicist mentions having reliable friends in the jungle who might help. Kay receives items at the Trailblazer and briefly discusses past experiences with Aang. The scene then shifts to Kay discovering an ambush by the Empire, leading to a call for help. Kay unexpectedly finds himself working with rebels to infiltrate an Imperial base. The plan involves Kay entering the base while a rebel team creates an extraction path. Kay is hesitant due to past experiences but agrees to help. 
The base is located down a canyon to the west. K prepares to enter the base, aiming to shut down its defense grid to allow the rebel assault. K successfully infiltrates the base and meets the physicist in a maintenance room outside the Viper Droid Lab. They plan to reset the Alpha Droid's protocols to work for the rebels, which will then influence the other Viper Droids. K uses a freedom spike to reprogram the droid. As they work, the rebel assault begins, creating chaos in the base. K provides backup and helps secure the Viper Droid for the Rebels. The reprogrammed Viper Droid proves effective in combat. K and the physicist finish wiping data to prevent the Empire from using the plans again. As they prepare to leave, the physicist decides to stay with the Rebels. K and his team escape the Imperial base, evading pursuit. They successfully reach space and enter the Outer Rim. The scene changes to a new location, where Kay is looking for ship modifications. He encounters someone who advises against dealing with Jawas for parts due to their poor quality. Despite the warning, Kay decides to seek out the Jawa caravan in the Dune Sea for the modifications he needs. The interaction involves a misunderstanding about payment, with an interpreter explaining that the Jawas require a sarlacc tooth from its second mouth as payment, rather than credits or personal teeth. The scene opens with a negotiation involving a Jawa proverb about eating sand for free if unwilling to pay for breakfast. A deal is struck to obtain a tooth, with the condition that a turret being installed is of good quality. The speaker mentions hiring Jawas to work on the trailblazer, installing a turret. They express uncertainty about its effectiveness, but remain optimistic. The conversation shifts to finding a sarlacc, implying a potential adventure or mission ahead. The group encounters a massive dead Sarlacc. There's mention of its value on the black market and potential competition for its parts. The scene is tense, with expectations of other scavengers arriving soon. The group explores the Sarlacc, noting its size and unique features like multiple mouths. A distraction is needed as they prepare to enter the creature. Meanwhile, Jawas arrive with the promised turret, though its functionality is uncertain. The speaker reflects on a saying from their past, misquoting it, but conveying the essence of prioritizing possibility over perfection. The exploration of the Sarlacc continues, with the group navigating through its internal structure. They successfully obtain one tooth, describing its texture as leathery. The speaker expresses hope that the acquired turret will be worth the effort. As they delve deeper into the Sarlacc pit, they encounter numerous dead creatures within. The mission becomes more challenging as they search for a specific tooth, possibly competing with other scavengers. The situation intensifies as the group races to secure their prize. They discover that the Sarlacc had swallowed an entire skiff, adding to the bizarre nature of their surroundings. The speaker successfully retrieves the desired tooth, expressing relief and satisfaction. Meanwhile, there's growing concern about the Jawa's impatience, with humorous mentions of them attempting to disassemble a droid companion. The speaker hurries back to conclude their deal with the Jawa boss. The scene shifts to a moment of levity as the group encounters an unusual sight, possibly another creature or structure. They express a firm decision not to enter another enclosed space. There's a brief exchange about appearance, with a droid expressing pride in its new torso while humorously wishing for its original head. The successful acquisition of the tooth from the Sarlacc's second mouth is confirmed, satisfying the terms of their deal. The speaker observes the process with appreciation, likening it to the wheels of commerce in motion. The narrative takes a serious turn as they discuss finding the best seller in the galaxy and initiate Project Deadfall. A droid experiences system failures requiring a compound regulator. The group decides to seek help at an old factory from the Clone Wars era. There's tension as they consider the potential risks of their actions, including the possibility of the droid turning against them. The urgency of the situation is clear as they prepare to meet with someone named T. A holographic conversation with Jalen reveals approval of the group's recent actions, despite some reservations about bringing in outside help. 
The dialogue touches on the inevitability of attracting attention in their line of work, with an emphasis on the importance of surviving such encounters. The scene concludes with the group preparing for hyperspace travel, calculating coordinates, and initiating the jump. There's a moment of camaraderie and reassurance between characters before they depart. The group arrives at their destination, eager to find the factory that might help them. There's concern about the failing systems of a droid named ND5, with discussions about potential replacements and the specific need for a compound regulator from a BX power core. They encounter resistance and threats, leading to a tense standoff. The situation is diffused when they meet Tan, who agrees to show them the way to the factory through catacombs beneath his property. The group prepares to navigate this underground path with some trepidation about the dark and unfamiliar terrain. The group begins their journey through the catacombs, following power conduits that should lead them to the factory. They encounter various obstacles, including height differences and dead ends, which they overcome using tools like a fusion cutter. They activate old Clone Wars technology to progress, including a Sero lift that requires additional power. The tension builds as they hear sounds of potential threats in the darkness, identified as Saku beasts. Despite these challenges, they press on, determined to reach their goal. As they delve deeper into the facility, they encounter remnants of the Clone Wars, including deactivated battle droids and security systems. They successfully navigate these challenges, using their skills and tools to bypass obstacles. The group reaches a significant area of the factory, marveling at the hundreds of droids stored there. Their focus remains on finding a way to help ND5, whose systems are rapidly failing. They work to power up various consoles and generators to activate a turbo lift, all while being aware of potential pursuers. The situation becomes more complex as they realize they've been followed, likely by Zarek Bash. The group splits up, with some seeking shelter while others deal with the immediate threat. They encounter unexpected challenges, including strange creatures and malfunctioning droids. The factory's defensive systems activate, mistaking them for Jedi infiltrators. In a surprising turn of events, they form an alliance with their pursuers to rescue captured friends from huts, planning to sell them to the Empire. This leads to a tense negotiation and a new mission. The group prepares for their rescue mission, discussing strategies and gathering supplies. They focus on finding the necessary parts to repair ND5, specifically a compound regulator from a BX power core. As they ready themselves, there's a moment of reflection on past misunderstandings and the complexities of their current situation. The scene shifts to the surface, where they prepare to infiltrate hut territory to save the captured rebels. The mission is fraught with danger, as they must contend with both the huts and the looming threat of Imperial involvement. The rescue operation begins, with the team successfully freeing the prisoners from their cages. However, they're interrupted by the arrival of Zarek Bash, leading to a firefight. The group manages to overcome this obstacle and clear an escape route. In the aftermath, there's a discussion about the broader conflict with the Empire and the role of the Rebellion. The protagonist expresses frustration with the constant demands and dangers they face, highlighting the personal cost of their involvement. The scene concludes with urgent news about ND5's condition, prompting a swift return to address the droid's critical state. The scene opens with a tense moment as characters are instructed to quickly but carefully handle couplings. There's mention of a casino job that went wrong, with a character named Gek apparently making a mistake that led to alarm being triggered. The protagonist, K is accused of leaving Gek behind, forcing him to choose between prison or the Empire. K defends himself, stating he works better alone. A conversation unfolds about a battle droid named Andy, who without a restraining bolt functions solely as an infiltration and termination unit. The protagonist is portrayed as someone who brings together secrets, contacts, and credits. There's mention of needing two slicers for a big job, and a death mark that isn't going away. An old friend returns, ready to provide firepower, 
noting that rebellions aren't cheap. The dialogue shifts to a character who was surprisingly found still in an imperial uniform. They explain that the Empire provided them with meals and equipment, but would hunt down and shoot deserters. The conversation turns to past events on Kanto, which the character prefers not to discuss. The protagonist, K expresses a desire for his cut of the job and for a character named Rico to leave. A secret is revealed about one character's wealthy background on Corellia where their family built ships before being torn apart by the Empire. The character credits Andy Five for their survival. The conversation turns to Kay's mother, described as one of the best slicers, who wants Kay to succeed in the upcoming heist more than anyone else. The next step in their plan involves infiltrating Saro's mansion to obtain a master key of passcodes. The setting shifts to Toshara space, where a character with a chest wound is holding their own despite past injuries. The mission continues as they search for a specific location indicated by a red dot. Jabba the Hutt is mentioned, suggesting potential complications or opportunities. There's a brief exchange about ND5 not belonging to the speaker and a hint at some form of incrimination. The mission involves retrieving a data pad containing blackmail information on Governor Thornton. The Huts are attempting to gain influence on Tashara. A backstory is hinted at, involving Jalen's former smuggling ring and complications with the Huts on Nar Shadda. The scene shifts to a location with significant damage, not caused by bandits. Characters search for a hidden data pad amidst the wreckage. They discover signs of a recent blaster fight and prepare for potential hostile encounters. A tense confrontation occurs with hostile individuals demanding the data pad. The protagonists attempt to talk their way out of the situation, but it escalates into a firefight. After the confrontation, the search for the data pad continues. A character named Nyx picks up a scent, leading the team to investigate further. The team discovers the involvement of the Pike Syndicate and intercepts communications, suggesting Crimson Dawn has acquired the target data pad. They formulate a plan to retrieve it and escape quickly. The protagonists successfully acquire the data pad and make their escape amidst increasing chaos and pursuit. As they attempt to flee, their ship is ordered to disable engines for inspection. They decide to wait for the right moment to escape, aware that immediate movement would make them an easy target. The escape is successful, and the conversation turns to the protagonist's history with Jabba the Hutt. It's revealed that Jabba's power grew after the destruction of the Hutt Council, making him a necessary, if dangerous, ally for operations in Hutt-controlled space. As they prepare to deliver the data pad to Jabba, there's a brief discussion about a droid's freedom chip. The protagonist attempts to avoid the conversation, showing discomfort with the topic. The contents of the data pad are discussed, revealing dirt on Theron, who has been selling Imperial secrets for millions. The pad also contains Imperial blueprints, which Jabba hadn't mentioned, but likely knew about. As they approach Jabba's palace, the protagonist's history with the Huts is further elaborated. It's revealed that their services were sold to Jabba as a form of repayment for using his hyperspace lanes without permission. The data pad is successfully delivered to Jabba, clearing the protagonist's debt. However, it's revealed that Jabba knew about the additional schematics all along, demonstrating his cunning and far-reaching knowledge. The mission with Jabba concludes, and the team prepares to depart. There's tension regarding the handling of the Imperial schematics and Jabba's awareness of them. As they leave Jabba's territory, there's a discussion about a potentially dangerous crew member who may have rigged their location with explosives, causing concern among the team. The scene transitions to a new location as the team lands their ship. A tense conversation occurs between the protagonist and their mother, Jalen. 
There's clear history and unresolved issues between them, but they agree to focus on the upcoming job involving Saro and the ISB. The plan to infiltrate an ISB station and acquire Saro's master key is discussed. Despite tension, the protagonist and Jalen agree to work together, acknowledging the need for two skilled slicers for the job. The infiltration of the ISB station begins, with the team using a stolen shuttle to gain entry undetected. Inside the station, the team works to locate floor plans and identify Saro's meeting place. They successfully distract a guard to access a terminal. Information about Saro's meeting with an important ISB official is discovered. A plan is formulated to use maintenance passages and a conveyor system to reach the upper levels where the meeting is taking place. The protagonist proceeds alone through the maintenance passage while receiving guidance via comms. Complications arise when they're spotted, forcing them to race to a data extraction hub to wipe evidence of their presence before it's too late. The mission begins with an apology for a previous mistake. The team discovers that Vipers are connected to terminals and can be sliced. Some droids are still active, necessitating caution to avoid detection. The conversation hints at past experiences with Vipers. The team is searching for information about Zerg Bash and their connection to the Empire, uncovering the use of Viper droids in something called Project Swarm. They prepare to infiltrate an ISB meeting room to obtain a key, utilizing a vent system for covert access. The infiltration continues as the team overhears a conversation involving Imperial officials. They witness a tense exchange between bounty hunters and Imperial agents, revealing complex power dynamics and financial stakes. The scene shifts to a report being delivered, highlighting the Zerg B Syndicate's infiltration of the underworld and claims of uncovering a rebel network. However, this success is contested, with accusations of failure in finding actual Rebel Alliance members. The confrontation escalates, with the ISB defending its intelligence network against criticism from military leadership. A major revelation occurs as SLO is identified as an Imperial ISB director, catching the team off guard. This discovery leads to internal conflict about whether to abandon the mission or press forward to obtain the master key and passcodes. Despite the increased danger, the decision is made to continue, targeting SLO's private quarters for the necessary information. The team successfully accesses the room and begins replicating base codes onto a data card, aware of the risk of detection. The mission progresses with the team uploading data and planning their escape. They discuss framing rebels for their actions to misdirect Imperial suspicions. As they navigate through the facility, they encounter increased security presence and overhear conversations about Imperial leadership's intolerance for failure. The escape becomes more challenging, requiring careful navigation through automated systems. Personal moments are shared between team members, reflecting on past relationships and the changes they've undergone. Upon regrouping, the team shares critical information about Zergbash being an Imperial front and SLO's true identity as an ISB agent. This revelation raises the stakes significantly, threatening not only their mission but potentially their lives and those of their associates. Despite the increased danger, the potential reward of 157 million credits keeps them committed to the plan. They discuss the details of their heist, including accessing the ventilation system, disabling energy gates, and dealing with automated security measures. The team takes a moment to reflect on their personal situations and the risks they're taking. They discuss the likelihood of success and potential outcomes. Final preparations are made, with team members addressing unresolved issues and contemplating their futures post-heist. The possibility of forming a new criminal outfit is raised, highlighting the potential for a significant power shift in the wake of ongoing conflicts between the Empire and Rebels. As the operation begins, tensions rise over the distribution of the potential payout, revealing conflicting loyalties and expectations within the team. 
They infiltrate the target location, working to disable security systems and gain access to restricted areas. The team splits up to handle different aspects of the heist, with some members focusing on security override while others prepare for extraction. They encounter and overcome various obstacles, including security droids and complex locking mechanisms. The team progresses through the facility, utilizing their diverse skills to bypass security measures and avoid detection. They face unexpected challenges and time pressures, adapting their plan as they go. As they approach the vault, the complexity of their task becomes apparent, requiring precise coordination to disable barriers and turrets simultaneously. The operation reaches a critical point, with success hanging in the balance as they prepare for the final stage of their audacious heist. The protagonist encounters a gatekeeper droid and attempts to gain access by claiming to work for SLO and the Empire's ISB. However, a misstep in questioning ruins the ruse. The advanced gatekeeper droid is overcome and the team prepares to open a vault using planted charges. They discuss the importance of not reusing access codes. The team discovers they were expected and ambushed. A confrontation ensues, with the protagonist facing a dangerous opponent. The situation escalates as the team realizes the extent of the trap they've fallen into. The antagonist threatens them with the full force of the ISB, claiming their lives and connections are forfeit. Negotiations occur amidst the tense situation, with the protagonist managing to strike a deal. The team splits up due to security concerns, with some members heading to the casino while others take an alternate route. They plant a homing beacon and confirm its functionality. The plan encounters complications as Zerfash is found empty and the team prepares for an impending fight. The team secures valuable data, including Imperial clearance codes, operational plans, and blackmail material on high-ranking Imperial officers. It's revealed that SLO had been building a powerful syndicate while failing in his official mission. A deal is struck regarding the fate of Zerak Besh, but trust issues arise within the team. A mentor figure advises the protagonist about the dangers of their chosen path, warning about trust issues in the galaxy. They offer temporary accommodation while the protagonist figures out their next move. The scene shifts to a rescue operation, with team members reuniting and discussing their next steps. The team infiltrates what appears to be a Star Destroyer, aiming to free ND5 from a restraining bolt. They navigate through the ship, utilizing deception and quick thinking to avoid detection. They access a control room to locate ND5 and discover that SLO has been called for a conference, likely involving Jalen and ND5. The protagonist, disguised as a stormtrooper, escorts SLO to the bridge. A confrontation unfolds, revealing a complex family drama between SLO and Jalen. It's disclosed that Jalen betrayed his family for personal gain and revenge against SLO. The situation escalates as ND5, now under Jalen's control, becomes a threat. The protagonist attempts to free ND5 using a special device. They navigate through the ship's engineering section, planning to use the deflector shield power cores to stun ND5. A tense chase ensues, with ND5 hunting the protagonist under Jalen's orders. The protagonist tries to reason with ND5, believing there's more to him than just a battle droid. The confrontation with ND5 reaches its climax. The protagonist successfully activates both power cores and lures ND5 to the central emitter. In a surprising turn of events, ND5 seems to break free from his programming momentarily. The protagonist manages to overcome ND5, showcasing unexpected skills. The intense sequence concludes with the protagonist removing their disguise, preparing for the next phase of their mission. The scene opens with a tense conversation about the Codex, a powerful tool that could save many lives. The characters, including Kay and Sarah, are in a dangerous situation, trying to escape a formidable force. They are waiting for a turbo lift to arrive aware that they are vastly outnumbered by stormtroopers. The urgency of their situation is palpable as they prepare to make their escape. As the characters board the turbo lift, 
their anxiety grows. They acknowledge the overwhelming odds against them, facing a Star Destroyer. The lift arrives, and they hurriedly board, knowing that time is of the essence. The constant threat of stormtroopers adds to the tension as they make their escape, hoping to outrun the seemingly endless Imperial forces. The scene shifts to a space battle. The characters are aboard a ship, preparing for hyperspace jump. There's an urgent attempt to contact a base, warning of an impending Imperial attack. Communication is difficult, possibly due to jamming. The ship's systems are being prepared for combat, with power diverted to deflectors. The situation is dire, with the characters desperately trying to warn their allies of the approaching danger. The space battle intensifies. A distress beacon is activated, calling for reinforcements. The characters face overwhelming odds, with three battle squadrons of TIE fighters approaching. They prepare to test their ship's capabilities against these forces. Meanwhile, a Star Destroyer moves into bombardment position, threatening a rebel base. Despite their efforts, communication with the base remains impossible due to jamming, increasing the tension and urgency of their situation. The characters identify a jammer blocking their communications and decide to take it out. They engage in a fierce dogfight, with their ship taking heavy damage. The shields fluctuate under the assault, but they manage to activate their turret. Despite losing control momentarily, they continue to fight. Unexpectedly, help arrives in response to their distress beacon, turning the tide of the battle in their favor. As the battle progresses, there's a discussion about the value of the Codex to an organization called the Dawn. The rebels have evacuated, but the Star Destroyer poses a significant threat to a nearby factory and the planet Miara. The characters strategize on how to neutralize this threat, focusing on destroying the Star Destroyer's shield generators. They engage in a high-stakes assault, knowing the odds are against them but determined to succeed. The assault on the Star Destroyer continues. The characters manage to inflict significant damage, causing internal explosions and a chain reaction. Against all odds, they succeed in destroying the massive Imperial vessel. As the Star Destroyer falls, the characters prepare to make their escape, celebrating their unlikely victory against the Empire's formidable forces. In the aftermath of the battle, the characters discuss the implications of their actions and the power of the Codex. They reflect on the luck involved in their victory and contemplate their future moves. Some characters prepare to part ways, with mentions of new jobs involving droids, casinos, and other adventures. There's a sense of camaraderie mixed with uncertainty about what lies ahead. The conversation turns to the Codex, revealed to have survived the battle. Its value and the secrets it contains are discussed, with potential for starting a new business or gaining power in the underworld. The characters negotiate their shares in future partnerships, hinting at the complex relationships and potential future adventures that lie ahead for them in this dangerous galaxy. The scene shifts to a more personal moment, revealing backstory about one of the characters. They are described as the best slicer in the galaxy, with a complex history involving multiple crews and a deliberate lack of attachments. A mysterious tracker is mentioned, custom-built and at least a decade old, suggesting a long-standing pursuit or connection to someone from their past. The final moments delve deeper into the character's past, revealing a life of constant movement and intentional detachment. The tracker is further discussed, its sophistication implying a powerful and persistent entity behind it. The scene ends with a cryptic exchange, hinting at unresolved conflicts and the complex nature of trust and loyalty in their dangerous world. The mention of an Imperial trooper adds another layer of intrigue to the unfolding story.